Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the seventh lecture of open course on diffusion in multi-component solids. In this lecture, we will derive the expression for entropy of mixing for an ideal solution. In order to give you a flavor of multi-component thermodynamics, we will apply this treatment to an n-component solution. So we are going over solution thermodynamics. Last class. Uh, we evaluated partial molar Gibbs free energy of mixing of uh, constituent uh, atoms uh, or elements based upon uh, assuming the process of forming solution to be equivalent to evaporation of one mole of the uh, constituent from the pure element at constant temperature and pressure P i 0, then reducing the uh, pressure of the vapor from P i 0 to P i which is the vapor pressure over the solution and then condensing that one mole from the vapor phase into the solution. With this we got the expression for partial molar gives free energy of mixing of the component I as R T L N A I where A I is the thermodynamic activity of component I in the solution. And so, we get molar Gibbs free energy of mixing if we form an n component solution as R T sigma L n A i i equal to 1 to l. So, there should be a factor x i. So, for a binary solution of A and B. We will get delta G m to be R t x a ln a a plus x b ln a b. So, now uh, we will go over couple of models of forming the solution of condensed phases, we will talk particularly about solids. So, that we understand how the process occurs physically. Okay. So, delta G m or the molar Gibbs free energy of mixing can also be written as delta H m minus T delta S m, this is at constant temperature and pressure, <coughs> where delta H m is molar enthalpy of mixing and delta S m is the molar entropy of mixing. So, the contribution to delta H m or the change in enthalpy associated with the process of mixing is the contribution to it is mainly from the changes in the types of bonds right. So, when we form A B solution from pure A and pure B right in pure A and pure B there are only A A and B B pairs. When we form the solution some of the similar atom pairs will be replaced by A B pairs. Now, A A B B and A B interactions are not same. So, it causes changes in the uh, potential energy which will lead to change in the enthalpy. So, that is the change in enthalpy and change in entropy. Obviously, when you form a solution from pure elements in the solution there are more special uh, configurations available and so there is a change in entropy. So, we will first look at the ideal solution model. In an ideal solution essentially the enthalpy of mixing is 0 which means there exists no interactions between the atoms or if there are interactions they are all same. So, it does not matter what pair we are looking at A A B B or A B 
the interactions are all same okay. and the entropy of mixing is essentially all from the change in configurational entropy okay so let's try to evaluate delta s configuration for the process of mixing so suppose we form an n component solution by mixing n1 atoms of element 1 n2 atoms of element 2 and so on right so we have n1 atoms of 1, n2 atoms of 2 and so on and n atoms of n. So, the total number of atoms will be the summation of all the atoms right. Okay. So, before mixing It is called the entropy of the system before mixing and we are talking here about only the configurational entropy. What should be the entropy of the system before mixing? Zero, right. So, how many configurations are available? Right. We know all one atoms are on lattice of 1 all 2 atoms are on lattice of 2 and so on right and all 1 atoms are identical all 2 atoms are identical all 3 atoms are identical. So, there is only one possible way in which these atoms can be arranged before mixing. So, by Boltzmann equation we know S 1 is k ln omega, omega is the number of configurations possible and omega here is 1. So, S 1 is 0. So, delta S configuration is essentially S 2 minus S 1 which is equal to S 2 where S 2 is the configurational entropy after mixing. So, let us try to evaluate S 2. For that we need to evaluate the number of possible configuration after mixing. So, let us this is omega 1 let us call this omega 2. So, how do we evaluate that? To form a solution more particularly we here talk about random solution which means there is a random mixing. Okay. So, all n 1 atoms are distributed randomly on the available n sides n 2 atoms are distributed randomly and so on. So, in that case how many number of different ways we can arrange n 1 atoms on n sides. That will be n c n 1. Now, once we arrange n 1 atoms there are only n minus n 1 sides are left. So, we select n 2 atoms and arrange them on the available n minus n 2 sides. So, there are n minus n 1 c n 2 number of ways possible in which n 2 atoms can be arranged. After we arrange n 1 and n 2 number of sides left are n minus n 1 minus n 2 and n 3 atoms can be arranged on these many sides in n minus n 1 minus n 2 c n 3 number of ways right and so on. So, let us write the formula for n c n 1 should be n factorial divided by n 1 factorial times n minus n 1 factorial times n minus n 1 factorial divided by n 2 factorial times n minus n 1 minus n 2 factorial 
times n minus n 1 minus n 2 factorial divided by n 3 factorial times n minus n 1 minus n 2 minus n 3 factorial and so on. So, we can simplify this, this cross terms will just keep getting cancelled and so finally, we have the expression for omega 2 as n factorial divided by n 1 factorial, n 2 factorial so on till n n factorial. So, we can write S 2 is equal to k ln omega 2 is nothing but n factorial divided by n 1 factorial, n 2 factorial, so on till n n factorial. So, how do we simplify this further? So, each number here is typically a very large number right even if when we talk about one mole of solution that n is going to be 6.023 times 10 to power 23 number of atoms right. So, if we are dealing with large numbers we can use Stirling's approximation. says ln x factorial is equal to x ln x minus x for large values of x. So, if we use this approximation we can write S 2 is equal to k ln we can rearrange this ln n factorial minus ln n 1 factorial minus ln n 2 factorial and so on and we can use Stirling's approximation for each of the ln term. So, this becomes k times n ln n minus n minus n 1 ln n 1 plus n 1 minus n 2 ln n 2 plus n 2 and so on. So, now we can see this terms n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 till n n they add up to number n and so this will get cancelled and n again can be written as n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 till n n. So, we can again do the rearrangement and we get S 2 is equal to k n 1 ln n over n 1 plus n 2 ln n over n, n 2 and so on. Now, if we take the inverse, we can take the negative sign out. So, this will be essentially minus ln n 1 by n and n 1 by n is the atom fraction of 1 or mole fraction of 1 which we call as x 1. So, we can write this as S 2 is equal to minus k n 1 ln x 1 plus n 2 ln x 2 so on till x n ln sorry n n ln x n. So, if we multiply and divide by the Avogadro's number, so if you multiply k by Avogadro's number k times n a is what gas constant r.
and we have to divide inside by Avogadro's number n1 by Avogadro's number. Number of atoms divided by Avogadro's number is number of moles. So, this will be n1 ln x1 plus n2 ln x2 so on till n n ln x n. So, basically delta s configurational in this case it should be equal to s 2 this should be more appropriately delta s prime because we are talking about the entire system. If we say per mole we have to divide by the total number of moles. So, we can get rid of this prime sign. So, the molar configurational entropy of mixing we divide this by total number of moles. So, n 1 by total number of moles will be again the mole fraction of 1 n 2 divided by total number of moles will be mole fraction of 2 and so on. So, we get the expression for configurational entropy change to be minus r x 1 ln x 1 plus x 2 ln x 2 till n. So, basically delta s mixing for ideal solution which is all because of the change in configurational entropy should be equal to minus r sigma x i ln x i i is equal to 1 to n. Obviously, since delta h m is 0, so delta g m ideal should be equal to minus t delta s m ideal and so delta g m ideal should be equal to r t sigma x i ln x i i equal to 1 to n. So, this is the expression we got for the Gibbs free energy of mixing for an ideal solution. If you remember we also derived an expression for Gibbs free energy of mixing for ideal gases and they come out to be same. So, if we plot this as a function of composition, so let us do this for just a binary solution of say components A and B. So, for binary ideal solution of A and B, we can write delta S m i d is equal to minus r x a ln x a plus x b ln x b and delta g m i d will be r t times x a ln x a plus x b ln x b. So, let us plot both these quantities as a function of composition say x b. So, x a and x b are fractions right. So, these logarithmic terms are negative which means delta s m i d has to be positive and the way it varies with composition you can plot it will be like this. So, this is delta s m i d and delta g m i d you just need to multiply by minus t. Since this is positive delta g m i d will be negative, but you need to multiply by factor of t. delta 
GM ID. So how do we interpret this curve? Obviously, you see a minimum somewhere, so do not interpret it as the composition corresponding to this minimum is the most stable solution. Okay. So, the way it has to be interpreted is at a given composition. So, let us say we are considering this composition, let us say x a 1, x b 1. What does this mean is delta G mixing for ideal solution of A and B of composition x a 1, x b 1 is negative, which means if we mix A and B in this proportions, there will be a negative change in Gibbs free energy, which means that mixing process is an irreversible process. Okay. So, that is the way it has to be interpreted. So, this was for ideal solution. We will now look into the non-ideal solutions that will be in the next class.